Hello and welcome to the Career Connect Washington Task Force. My name is Eric Wolf. I'm Director of Programs and Policy at the State Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board. I'm here to give you a short orientation on a policy framework that was developed last year by public and private stakeholders who were involved in a state policy academy. Uh, you can find a full version of that framework in your briefing materials. It's the blue cover which you see on the upper right hand side of your screen. Uh, this brief summary is going to give you a little bit of context about the policy framework's creation, tell you how the pieces fit together, and also why the Policy Academy team members identified each element of the framework as an important component of moving career-connected learning forward in the state of Washington. In 2015, Washington received a Policy Academy grant from the National Governors Association and the Siemens Foundation to join a cohort of six states that were doing a deep examination of career connected learning opportunities available in their states and to uh, assess what policy barriers prevented bringing high quality career connected learning to scale across the state. Um, our, our team ended up recruiting a coalition from both the public and private sectors of stakeholders that are interested in career connected learning. All told, we had approximately 60 members uh, from several dozen organizations and both the public and private sectors join our team. We had a smaller core team of the organizations listed on the screen uh, which often represented our team on out-of-state visits with the other policy academy teams uh, from the other five states. The centerpiece or culmination of the policy academy's work was this framework which is in your briefing packet. Uh, the Policy Academy team, after they did their examination of different policies and practices in the state, came up with these seven components that they believe would further career-connected learning in Washington State if implemented, which we like to think of as falling into sort of four different topic categories. The first two components, which we'll look at, have to do with career exploration and planning for young people in the state of Washington. Uh, a second category is really about increasing access to career connected learning experiences around the state with a particular emphasis on uh, reaching underserved communities, including communities out in uh, rural areas of the state. Uh, another big topic area for our policy framework components is really about creating an environment where the public sector and the private sector can build strong partnerships based in a sense of co-investment in programs. And then finally, uh, a real point of emphasis for our Policy Academy team was seizing the opportunity to newly integrate apprenticeships uh, into the scene in Washington State and really seize on an opportunity um, to see those programs grow. So the first component of the framework is really a recognition that high quality career connected learning is only going to be scaled in Washington if we have strong co-investment between the public and private sectors. Um, from a public sector perspective, we've certainly learned over the last couple of years that we could do a better job engaging with our employer partners by creating single points of contact for them to work with, more structure in the way we build our, our relationships with business. Uh, so we're trying to do a better job of creating identifiable points of contact and communicating the value of different program models in business terms so that business understands and can make logical co-investments from that information. The second framework component also has to do with engaging with employers in part, but it's a, it's a bit of a broader point. It really has to do with providing instructors and other school staff, including counselors, with the appropriate professional development and resources to make their work with employers meaningful and impactful. Um, on one hand, teachers go to teaching college to learn to teach. They don't always have a lot of experience with the private sector, with the world of work in the private sector, so we recognize that there's some professional development that needs to be delivered just on working with the private sector. Uh, but there are also professional development and resources that need to be created to help support teachers and schools build more effective programs in partnership with employers. And that's what this framework component is really all about.
The framework's third component is to build more connections between in industry and educators themselves. Uh, related to the point that we made earlier that most teachers don't have a ton of experience in the private sector, uh, teachers who have been on the job for a while sometimes don't have their finger on the pulse of what's changing in the private sector as rapidly as it changes. Uh, so our Policy Academy team has been especially excited to look at programs like teacher externships that give instructors an ability to do like a residency in a local business that allows them to learn timely skills that they can take back to the classroom. Um, ensuring that what students are really learning are the skills and competencies that businesses are looking for. So critical uh, in our conversations throughout the, the, the Policy Academy uh, were the facts that in many cases in Washington career connected learning uh, opportunities don't adequately reach people in rural communities and don't always make the highest impact among underserved communities. Uh, this focus on equity and access has really been a critical component of our work over the last year and a half, has run through pretty much all of the recommendations in the policy framework. Uh, we, we have loads of data that show the impact that career connected learning has on students regardless of their race, gender, zip code where they've grown up. Uh, we've great, got great data that shows uh, that these programs have a huge impact across the state. We'd love to see us leverage our opportunities everywhere in the state whenever possible. Another component of the policy framework has to do with high school and beyond planning. In Washington State, students are required to do a high school and beyond plan. What that actually looks like on the ground, though, varies pretty significantly district to district. Uh, the legislature just last year acted to put some more rigorous requirements around high school and beyond planning to make it available to students in middle school before they enter high school, which we think are exciting developments. That being said there's, said, there's still very little consistency to the planning process on the ground statewide. From the state level, uh, we've been working to provide a toolkit of resources that will make high school and beyond planning more impactful at the local level so long as local districts know about the tools and take them up. Uh, but we could build a much more robust set of tools for districts to adopt. Mentorship has also become a real focus for our Policy Academy and we think is a critical component to increasing access to career connected learning. Uh, we've seen uh, many programs across the state that take mentorship and use that as an incredible value add to really solidify students direction down the career path they're walking. Uh, that being said, mentorship programs are some of the hardest to sustain and scale we found. Oftentimes they're personality driven and, and when the mentorship coordinator leaves an education institution sometimes the programs tend to atrophy. We'd like to really um, come up with a way to build a tool, tool chest of resources for schools to build strong mentorship programs that will stand the test of time. The final component of the framework is that we could do a much better job expanding awareness and access to registered youth and adult apprenticeship options in the state of Washington. Uh, one of the strongest findings from our Policy Academy work uh, was that uh, the inability to both earn and learn is a huge barrier for a lot of young people, especially from underserved communities. So apprenticeships represent an, an opportunity for those folks to get the education training they need to attach to a career path, but also get a living wage while doing it, which is very important. Uh, the value proposition for businesses is also very clear with, with apprenticeship opportunities. Businesses get a hand in creating a training regime that they know will create an employee that has the right and relevant skills that the business needs to succeed. Uh, we have a lot of data that shows that uh, it also improves the, the tightness of a fit with an employee to their ultimate position and also helps employees ultimately retain those employees long term. So thank you for joining me on this very brief look at the NGA uh, work and the policy framework that emerged from it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me via email. You will also have an opportunity to ask questions at our task force meeting next week, so feel free to also address them then. Uh, if we're unable to address them, we're happy to put you in touch with the right people or send you resources via email.